to all the budding and talented students out there at NIE who are aiming to take a step towards doing their masters. Yes, wait right there because you're watching the right video. Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel. This is Arya, one of the placement coordinators of the Information Science Department, and I'm here to give you or take you through a journey and give you certain insights about facts related to doing, doing your master's course. For that, today, we have with us Pooja and Sunani for the alumni of NIE, who will be here to give, me, to give you certain tips, hacks, and tricks through our question and answer round with them today. So you guys uh, studied in the civil department and you finished your engineering, but why did you all choose to do MS? So there are a lot of reasons actually to pursue MS. According to me, the foremost reason is that uh, during our bachelor's, we only brush over the subjects, like all the subjects in the particular branch of study. But while pursuing masters, you advance your technical skills in that particular uh, area of study that you're passionate about. Also, another important reason is that I believe education system in abroad is a good experience, and the work culture there is really amazing. That's really nice. So, basically, doing your masters is going to give you a much more in-depth knowledge about what you're planning to do. Also, a lot of students have uh, aimed at doing masters abroad. So what are the popular uh, destinations or the countries which uh, students like to choose? And also, since you guys are in the civil department, what are the different courses that they have to offer for us? I'm not sure the other branches of engineering, but coming to civil engineering, I feel uh, places like US, Canada, UK, Germany and Netherlands are really good for civil. Uh, I would also like to talk about construction management because I'm interested in that field and I've done research over there. For construction management, Canada and US are really great. Even Netherlands is compared to be really nice. But if you take the transportation engineering, Germany is really nice. And even Netherlands, Netherlands, you there is the best college to go So, But you need construction management, Canada and US are the options. Okay, that's great. Uh, what have you both chosen in particular? What are the courses that you've taken? We both are incoming graduate students at uh, Texas A&M University. We both have chosen construction management. Okay. Yes. So moving ahead, uh, what are the exams that you have to take up so that you can um, get your master's in the college which you desire? Okay, um, there are two exams. Firstly, if you're concentrating on colleges which are not in US, then an uh, English exam would suffice be it uh, either TOEFL or IELTS. So if you're concentrating on US universities, then GRE is preferable. Uh, since because of the COVID, many universities have waived off GRE, but then after a few years, I think GRE would be a compulsory uh, criteria for selection. So coming to GRE, uh, you have a lot of sections. Uh, mostly it is quants and verbal. And the IELTS is an English-based exam, and it's very similar to GRE. It's always preferable that you take four days or one week after your GRE exam, because the verbal section are very similar and easy to your For IELTS exam, I would suggest you to go through YouTube videos. Uh, one is IELTS list. The other two are from the um, official organizers of IELTS, that is IDP and British Council. They have their uh, set of materials ready in YouTube and their uh, website as well. Uh, and the materials for GRE, I would suggest the official guide, GPS guide, I think that would suffice. Uh, for IELTS, it's very similar. Okay. For TOEFL, it's very similar to the verbal section, so I don't think so you need a separate material for that. And YouTube videos will go a long way, especially Greg Mac. He explains GRE and GMAT in thorough. It's a huge portion out there. You know, you have so many options when it comes to countries. You clarified that out. But when it comes to universities, again, you have a lot of options. So how do they actually shortlist and cut down uh, to the universities? First criteria for shortlisting universities would be the ranking. So there are many uh, ways you can search for the ranking, university ranking, be it uh, US News or QS Ranking or Shanghai News. You know, uh, you can get a list of the top universities. And then the second criteria would be the place where it's located, location. So companies where there, there's a job, job prospects for your particular program, choose wherever which location is really good for you. And also when shortlisting universities, see a lot of websites like Rocket or LinkedIn or Facebook is also a really good option where you can compare your performance in GRE or your GPA with the seniors one who got shortlisted or who got admits there 
and make a list of ambitious universities, safe universities, and uh, moderate universities. So it's always better to keep two ambitious universities and three or four safe, sorry, moderate universities and three safe universities. To add on to that, I would suggest not to waste money on the uh, safe universities. Like uh, each application, ha you have to pay a certain amount of money. But I would suggest to search for application fee waivers in various websites so that you don't have to spend on safe universities. That's a good tip. Okay, so now exams check, universities check, but the profile. That's a very important thing which all the universities look into before they admit you in. So, how do you. Uh, go about building a good and strong profile. Yeah. Um, I would like to speak about civil engineering in particular here because for civil engineering students, practical experience is everything. So I suggest them to uh, do a lot of internships and attend a lot of workshops that will help them, uh, that will help them build their profile a lot. Also, US universities in particular look into a holistic profile. So your extracurriculars, your committee services and uh, leadership skills matter a lot. Uh, so, Build a profile with regard to everything and not just academics. Also, coming to the SOP LOR part, uh, SOP, make sure you give a chalk out like one month to create like during your preparation for MS because SOP is a really main criteria, especially for ones who have scored a little less in GPA or who don't have much work experience. This can be a game changer. So spend a lot of time writing your SOP and LOR. The professors here are more than happy to give you a regulatory recommendation. So that's it. Nice. Okay, uh, so how many colleges did you guys apply for and how many did you receive at this one? In Canada, I applied to two universities. Both the universities were ambitious. Uh, that is for civil engineering, construction management. That is the University of British Columbia and uh, University of Alberta. And coming to US, I applied to five universities. Two were ambitious, two were moderate and one was safe. Uh, the ambitious university I applied to is Texas A&M University and Purdue University. And the moderate university I applied to is the uh, University of Florida and uh, North Carolina University. And the safe university I chose was Arizona State University. Adding on to that, um, I applied to quite a lot of safe universities because I got application fee waiver as I mentioned previously. So I got application fee waiver for UT Arlington uh, through Yorkit and I got uh, application fee waiver for Stevens and Oregon State University through Canon Consultants. So you can actually see about the consultancies who offer free services for US and they have a lot of application fee waivers with them. So check it out. So you guys uh, got admits from a lot of universities, but how do you actually finalize and uh, come down to one major one? So we received uh, admits from uh, a lot of universities. So the top ones were Purdue and Texas a &M. Initially, we decided to go with Texas, uh, Purdue University because of the ranking and reputation it has. Uh, but then after a few weeks, we got a scholarship from Texas a and University. So the main factor that we came down to was uh, repayment of loan. So since we got scholarship, it would mean at least saving five thousand dollars per semester. So uh, we chose uh, Texas A and M. But uh, I would suggest to I would suggest you guys to decide on these important factors. That is a location based on your industry and curriculum, return on investment and uh, research interest. Yeah, that's all. So before we uh, conclude this Q and A session. Uh, what are the tips that you would like to give to the students uh, which they wouldn't get from elsewhere and they shouldn't be missing? I would suggest create a profile in LinkedIn and make a lot of connections with seniors who are already in the university, whichever university you have shortlisted, and ask your doubts. Uh, just ask them very politely so you would most probably get an answer to them. And for me, it helped a lot. So, LinkedIn should be your follow a lot of YouTubers who do vlogs on uh, the application process and everything else related to US universities or anywhere you're planning to go. So uh, one is Pat Pujavatiya uh, who, who does videos on US universities. The other one is Bharat in Germany, it's BIG and he does on German universities. I would also suggest for students who are studying or in your final year, write a publication uh, you, for your final year especially, you can uh, write it in one of the national or international papers and publish it. It will help a lot and universities abroad consider that a plus point. I suggest you to join a lot of WhatsApp and Discord groups and also Facebook groups. You can search your university and you can get a lot of groups there. 
uh, there will be a lot of discussion going on as in how to apply an application process and what to do after you got an admit. You can uh, post queries there and get an answer either from seniors or your batchmates who knows better. Okay, so I think if you guys are done with all the tips and sharing of info. So this was what we had today for you guys and I hope this was really helpful. And uh, that's it. So we'll end the session and thank you so much Pooja and Sinani for uh, sharing your thoughts with us today.